Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and with the Loki series ending in a finale that elevates Loki to a true god status, did Marvel Studios actually push the release of the series to give themselves a possible off-ramp from Kang and instead shift toward Doctor Doom as the new big bad of the multiverse saga? In this video, I'm gonna break down the breaking news we've gotten from interviews with the Loki producers and from Marvel execs with Deadline, and a report from our colleague Joanna Robinson, co-author of the MCU Reign of Marvel Studios book about a possible shift in Avengers 5 from Kang to doom. And by the way, there are still some seats left for our live show in Los Angeles on Thursday. It's getting hotter and hotter every day. We have special guests, some fun bits we have never been able to do on YouTube, and a public apology from me over my reachier theories from Loki this season. Okay, in an article from Deadline Today, Marvel exec Kevin Wright, who was the rep from Marvel Studios Brain Trust assigned to the Loki series, he confirmed that the plan was to use this season of Loki and its themes to align the overall plan for the multiverse saga moving forward. He said, quote, there is going to be a stronger emphasis trying to make sure everyone is working from the same sheets, the same script. I think that is partially trying to get these writers on the Loki side who had been living in this world to maybe hopefully populate into other projects so that they can help with that or just better conversations among the producers internally. We've told almost 12 hours of Loki's story with the hope that they would come to us a little bit and go, hey, does this align with what you've been doing? It will probably help us out tremendously. So this would make it seem like head writer Eric Martin is going to play a very hands-on role with every multiverse saga story that's going to be told from here forward, including maybe some elements of Deadpool 3, but the Fantastic Four film and Avengers 5 and 6. This article also included a confirmation that Loki is the god of stories. Deadline used those words, but they only used that term after getting confirmation from head writer Eric Martin and from Kevin Wright. When you're writing an article as a journalist, you include direct quotes, but you also include paraphrases, and god of stories would have been confirmed by Eric Martin and from Kevin Wright when they were being interviewed for this article. Eric Martin said, going into season two, it felt like an opportunity to bring gravity to the series to step up a level because we marched up to the line and got to the man behind the curtain and the stakes got extremely high at the end of the season. Let's keep climbing. Let's keep building that. The idea was always Loki would finally get his throne when it was the last thing he wanted. And like Atlas, he's burdened with this purpose and his purpose is holding all of time together. He has replaced the loom. He's become so powerful that he alone can hold time together. Deadline said that even in the midst of season one, the creative team knew that they wanted season two to take Loki from a lowercase g god to a capital G god, as Martin put it. And then Martin went on to say, then the work goes into like, how do you achieve that. Everything goes back to the fight in the Citadel at the end of season one, which obviously we wanted to end up there at the end of season two. But looming over season two is a question of like, well, who was correct, Loki or Sylvie? So the question became about exploring that. What is the new reality that they face? What happens when you remove the power structure and now there is kind of nothing more in this? So with Loki becoming a god in full control of the Yggdrasil time tree, that in effect, downgrades the importance of Kang in the MCU, because Loki directly challenged the authority of He Remains in his system of timeline management, replacing a need for Kang in the MCU. And we even kind of hinted that with this reference to all the loose Kangs that have now been unleashed. And as you may or may not know, my variants are already out there. We'll find them. There's too many. I won't stop. Doesn't matter. Never stopped me before. I know, champ. He calls him Champ. It's almost like he remains as acknowledging, even if this line wasn't originally intended this way when they originally wrote it, but acknowledging that another multiverse mastermind can rival his power. When you have a Loki this powerful, do you really even need a Kang? The final minutes showed a case file recapping the events of Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania that they said was pretty much handled as if it was like done. We have been trying to make this out. Actually, Adam Burns on Twitter made out that this Kang's variant number is K8910. There was a Kang from Earth 8910 in the Excalibur number 14 in 19. 89. I don't know if it's connected, but just by presenting this case file and the lines we heard Mobius say just made it sound like that case file is closed. Our merch inspired by Loki season two keeps branching out from the sacred timeline, my friends. We got shirts inspired by Miss Minutes and our favorite repairs and advancements employee, OB. We've got a gorgeous Mobius jet ski design that makes you wish you could get pruned away to wherever those guys are at. If you order the TVA handbook shirt, I can't be promised it will be dropped into your open window like Renslayer at Victor Timely's workshop. That's completely up to your relationship with your local delivery driver. And if you want to snag a Marvel's tee, we've got you covered there too, all my flirkins out there. Grabbing a tee from Nerd Riot is a great way to support new rock stars. To get some Loki merch of your very own, either click the link in the description or head on over to nerdriot.shop. Many are seeing the way this season of Loki ended to be a possible out 
for Marvel Studios in case they want to move away as Kang as such an important character for their future plans. So Joanna Robinson, who as the author of the best piece of nonfiction about Marvel Studios history is really, in my opinion, the most reliable journalist with the best sources. She said in the House of Our Deep Dive podcast into the Loki season two finale, these words about what's going on. I actually yeah. heard from someone recently. I was asking about the screenwriter Jeff Loveness who wrote Quantumania was supposed to write King Dynasty. And then it was sort of like came out that maybe he was no longer. Anyway, it, it's confirmed. Like I got, I had it confirmed to me he's no longer working for Marvel and that I asked the person why and they said the reason why was that like his stuff you know he was all wrapped up in this Kang storyline and that they are likely going to be moving away from that so no official announcement that Avengers colon King Dynasty will now be called Doom's Dystopia or whatever like no we don't know like exactly what they're gonna do to be clear but I think that this just gives them the perfect opportunity to yeah. just be done. They want to be. Whoa. So Joanna definitely has the highest credibility of anyone I know talking about Marvel and the way these executives are actually plotting things out. I don't think she would have said this if there wasn't some movement actually happening at the studio right now. So with Marvel delaying to 2025, all of next year's MCU films, aside from Deadpool 3, it just seems like the studio is giving themselves some time to reconfigure things. There was that Variety report last week that said Marvel was, among many options, considering a pivot from Kang to Doctor Doom. But that article also <laughs> exaggerated how big of a role Kang would play in the finale of Loki, so I don't know how much we could trust that article, but Jonathan Major's domestic violence trial is now set to take place on November 29th. He did lose his bid to have the case dismissed. It's worth noting that Doctor Doom was really the central antagonist for the Jonathan Hickman run of the Time Runs Out storyline that led to the 2015 Secret Wars crossover that, based on Reed Richards' dialogue in Multiverse of Madness, seems to be the primary storyline that the studio is adapting for the multiverse saga. If they were to pivot back to Doom, in some ways it would be more in line with what the comics have already done. And yes, there was that little moment in the Loki finale in which Mobius told Loki about a kid by the Black Sea who would have grown up to kill 5,000 people, which geographically could be the country of Latveria and a young Victor Von Doom. I don't know about that. Marvel Studios is expected to announce its Fantastic Four lineup in the coming weeks, and that might include a big announcement about a new actor to play Doctor Doom. Would a switch to Doctor Doom scuttle all the work Marvel Studios has done for Kang already? Well, aside from Loki and Quantumania, how involved has Kang really been with the MCU? I mean, who knows? Marvel could just continue to suggest that conflicts between Kangs and Lokis just made a big mess of things throughout the multiverse saga, and someone else could step in to clean up that mess. That someone could be Victor Von Doom. Imagine, someone like Doctor Doom could exploit and take advantage of all of this chaos because he would be capable of seeing a vision and an opportunity that those in the trenches of the multiverse war could not see. And that vision could be Battleworld, a vast conflict between Avengers and X-Men and Spider-People and Marvel villains to decide who belongs in the 616 universe moving forward. I want to know from you, who do you want to be the big bad of the multiverse saga? Doom or Kang? Please support us with one of these OB-inspired We're All Gonna Die shirts at nerdriot.shop. You can follow me on all socials at EA Voss. Subscribe to the three channels of the Neurox Stars Network. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.